Wood Song by Gary Polson, Day 15. The ice gives us a joy run. The wind abates, the sun comes out, the trail across is flat, frozen seawater, and the dogs are well rested. We fly. I let them lope easily in a gentle canter for close to 40 miles before they come down into a trot, and when we stop to rest, several of the dogs actually start playing like puppies, crouching down and bouncing toward each other. The day passes in a kind of Gidget goes to gnome happiness, and when darkness comes, I see the lights of the checkpoint across the flat ice, and the dogs do as well, and they start running toward them in the same easy lope. Distances are very deceiving out on the ice, however, and we still probably have 30 or so miles to go. In a while, it seems as if the lights will never get closer, and the dogs break down into a fast trot that carries them all the way in. As we enter the village, a small boy leaps out of the darkness and grabs the leaders by the back of their harnesses to lead them up into his house where I will spend the checkpoint time. It is a nice gesture, but the dogs pile up on themselves, get tangled and turned inward. I am terrified they will begin fighting with the boy in the middle. Children and even adults have died this way. And I run up to him and grab him by the back of his jacket and hold him up away from the dogs and ask him why he grabbed my team. He smiles and says it's because he wants a team to stay at his house so he can learn about the dogs and sleds. And I am stunned that an Eskimo boy on the Bering Sea would have to ask someone from Minnesota about dogs. I stay in his house and his family feeds me and they treat me with the same gentle courtesy the older man showed me earlier. I try to speak of the dogs, but find that I cannot speak well, can only talk in grunts and single words and have some trouble being with people. After a time, I go back out with the dogs and sleep with them on the ice. I awaken at dawn just as a team pulls in. They look good and fresh for just coming across the ice, and I am surprised to see the musher run forward with a little rubber duck and roll in the snow with his dogs, squeezing the squeaky toy for them and playing with them. They love the game, and he keeps hiding the toy from them, and they try to get it away from him. Then he puts the duck away and dresses them in doggy sweaters so that they can sleep warm, and I leave the checkpoint in a kind of gladness that I had seen him, a gladness that I knew dogs, and they knew me, and that we had come together. It is the end of day 15. Days 16 and 17. Two more checkpoints. We run along the coast, along the edge of the ice, with towering cliffs going up to our right. The ocean is breaking away the ice, and finally there is nothing except water in front, so we angle up into the country across the mountain, dead over the top of it, and down across another bay on ice. Here the wind is strong and blowing straight from the rear. The ice is sheer, flat, absolutely slick, and the wind blowing from the rear makes my body act as a sail. The sled blows forward and sideways, and I must ride the brake to keep from running up on the dogs all across the bay. The dogs seem to smell gnome now. They have changed and know we are near the end, and when we leave the last checkpoint, but one, and head out onto the beach, a 40-mile-long beach ending in gnome, they seem to have a new purpose in their steps. It is perhaps all in my head, but then so much else is that it doesn't matter. We run through the day along the edge of the beach, running on the ice itself because the wind has blown all the snow off the beach stand. As dark comes, I can see lights of the finish, of Nome, 20 or more miles ahead, and when I realize what they are, I stop the team. I do not want to go in and finish the race. I do not understand why, but I do not want to go in. I actually begin to walk up and take my leader and turn the dogs around and run back. Back. There is no sense to it, but somehow it is because the race is something that doesn't seem like it can be done. Not really. You can talk about it and plan for it and train for it, but it is not something you can do. The run. Even then, when you are making the run, it doesn't seem possible. And while you are in it and crossing the Alaska Range at Rainy Pass and running through the burn and across the interior, even when you think you are alone on the planet and then know that you are alone on the planet, even as you run out to the coast and up the coast and across the Norton Sound and along the icy cliffs through all the glorious northern villages with names like Kaltag and Koyuk and Shuktulik and Unalukli and Elam. And even when you see the lights of Nome and you think you will easily finish, even then it is not something you can do, not something that can be done, and yet you do it. And then it becomes something you don't want to end, ever. You want the race, the exaltation, the joy, and the beauty of it to go on and on. And so I stopped them, and thought of turning around and going back into the middle of the world, the place I had found in the center of the world, where it was only the dogs and only me, and I hung there for a time, with my hands on the leader's back, and I think I would have turned them, except I heard a yell, and it was my wife. A man in Nome had brought her out on a small road in a jeep. They had seen me coming, and seen me stop, and her voice broke the spell. I got on the sled again, and let them run, and they followed the ice 
along the beach until we hit the ramp where they launched boats and we ran up onto Front Street and down the mile of bare asphalt to the arch, the finish line. Cookie the leader stopped before the arch and I had to drag her beneath it to finish. She was afraid of the crowd of people. I turned and could not keep from crying as I hugged my wife and son and then the dogs. Staring from front to back, hugging each dog until two mushers took them away to put them on beds and I turned to the mayor of Nome who was there to greet me and said the one thing I never thought I would ever say. We will be back to run it again. And I knew that it was true.